Hi everybody, Lauren here from Anita Good Design and I am here to teach you today one of our favorite techniques out of our fundamental curriculum. And I'm gonna to talk to you today about standard embroidery. Now, standard embroidery is the most basic technique that we're gonna talk about and that is in this book because it's the basis of any collection that you're going to stitch. Now, you're gonna come across all different types of stitches in your embroidery journey. You're gonna have satin stitches and bean stitches, just stitches galore. But these basic techniques that I'm gonna to talk to you today about is going to apply no matter what kind of project or quilt you end up stitching. Now let's talk about the materials that I have here with me today. Now we are going to use standard embroidery with a quilt block, that's what we're stitching out. So I have my no-show mesh cutaway stabilizer. I've already hooped this for you. Then I have my batting and then also my base fabric. And then of course we have a variety of threads that are gonna make our design pop and any notions and tools that you need like your scissors and your bobbin, extra needles, a seam ripper just in case, but always fingers crossed you will never need your your seam ripper today. All right, so let's get started. I'm gonna put my hoop in my machine and then you can use one of our two sets of directions that we have in the fundamental curriculum book. You're gonna have your pictured steps that are gonna guide you through what it is that you're doing and then we have our machine steps in the back that walk you through every single step and match your machine as well. Those are always my preference to use because it tells me everything I need to know and then it keeps me nice and organized with those machine steps as well. So the very first step is to run our squaring stitch. This is gonna show me where my quilt block is going to be stitched in my hoop so that I know where all of my materials are going to be placed and where the focus of my stitch work will happen. Now, right here is where my squaring stitch is. And I used a little bit of a darker thread so it's easy for you to see at home. Now, we typically, for best practice purposes, recommend that you use a thread color that's going to match your project um, and the fabrics and thread colors that you're using. So for whatever reason, it doesn't shine through your design. But for here, for home purposes, I want you to be able to see this. So this is exactly where I will then place my batting on top of it. Now I have exaggerated the size of my batting as well so that it's really easy for you to understand exactly where this project will be stitching. When you're prepping your fabrics at home, you can bring down the size of the batting to be just a little bit larger than your squaring stitch. So I'm gonna put my hoop back in my machine. The next step is gonna be my tacking stitch for my batting. It will tack the batting in place. So now my batting is tacked down. You can see where my, my tack down stitch came in. This is going to ensure that when I'm completely done, I no longer have batting when I put my blocks together. So what I'm gonna do is trim tightly all the way around, remove this excess batting out, and then we will move on to our next step, which will be placing my base fabric. But first, we have to trim. Now when you trim, you are going to want to trim as tight as you can to that tack down stitch without popping your stitches. So just be careful with that. Okay, so here is my quilt block and you can see my batting is all trimmed out, nice and neat. And then again, what I'm gonna do is place my material on top of my fabric. This is my base fabric here. All right, now again, for exaggerated purposes, we have our fabric a little bit larger, but when you're prepping your fabric, it's best practice that you have about a half inch seam allowance outside of your batting. So that gives you a good idea of how large to cut your blocks. 
in your fabric. So we always recommend about a half inch seam allowance that gives you a nice amount of seam. So when it does come time for you to put your quilt blocks together, you have some wiggle room in there to kind of play with. So again, I'm gonna put my quilt block and my hoop back in my machine and tack down my base fabric. Now that our base fabric is attached, my next step is my stippling. So we add our stippling stitch work in our block right from the beginning. So that way, when it comes time to put our blocks together, it's already created that quilted effect right in your hoop. It makes it very, very simple. So I'm going to let that happen next and, and push my go button and I'll meet you back in just a minute. Okay, so our stippling has completely stitched out. At, at home, it's gonna be a little difficult for you to see my stippling because typically we choose a thread color that matches our base color and our base fabric uh, for our stippling. Now, the fun part has come. We get to now stitch out all of our beautiful elements, specifically for this block, it is our flowers. So we always suggest having a game plan ahead of time. So what you wanna do is look at our directions and we tell you in those step-by-step -step number directions everything that's gonna stitch out. We give you a little bit of a descriptor so you know what's coming. And then of course you have your wonderful machine that, that kind of gives you a picture as well. So we recommend having your color palette planned ahead of time using whatever threads that you would like. It just makes the process much easier. Now, if you are somebody who is color challenged and you need a little assistance, we have also included the thread colors and the brand of thread that we have used in your directions. So you can always use ours as help too, but don't feel like you have to. Feel free to you know use your own palette, your own colors, uh, and, and create your own individual project here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna stitch out all of the remaining steps, which is the standard embroidery here. So I'm gonna do that and you stitch at home and we will come back together and finish our project so that we can see exactly what our standard embroidery technique finishes off to look like. All right, let's get stitching. All right, how much fun was all that stitching? I bet you loved it because I know I had a really good time stitching out my block as well. So I have my block here. You can see how beautiful this turned out. I followed my numbered steps and just walked through it. Now, what I'm gonna do is pop this out of the hoop because I'm all done. And my block is still in my stabilizer. What we're gonna wanna do is cut a half inch all the way around, so I'll show you how I do that too. Place that down and you're gonna do that on all four sides. Now, if you've been doing this for a while and you're comfortable to keep it at a quarter of an inch, that's absolutely fine as well, but we always recommend if you're just starting out to trim to that half inch. Okay, so now we are all trimmed up, and as you can see, my block is complete. Absolutely beautiful, my stitching is gorgeous. And now from here, I can choose, do I wanna make more of the same block? Do I wanna make other blocks? And as always, sky's the limit with your standard embroidery technique. So now that you've completed your first standard embroidery, you can take this technique and apply it to so many different projects. I really hope that that helped you learn something new with us here at Anita Good Design. Thank you so much.